and our architecture. Before we talk about developing your own project, you should focus on your project definition. For example, are you trying to develop a UAV, a vehicle, or a UAS, a system? What is the level of autonomy you need for your project? And what is part of the flying stack or the payload, both in terms of hardware and software? And what is your business model? Are you selling hardware, software, service, a mix of everything? That has to be defined. First, is it a vehicle or a system? When you start from a remote control drone, you have a drone and a pilot. So you would think that when you have an autonomous drone, you are just removing the pilot. And what is left is an autonomous drone. But actually, when you work with fleets, um, the drone is not alone. It has to collaborate with servers, with other drones, with um, air traffic control, with mapping system, authorization, storage, data analysis. So your drone is just the part of a larger IT system that happens to be deployed on the field. That is a part that is deployed in the physical world, capturing data, uh, moving objects potentially. Uh, so we are very likely talking about a UIS, not only UAV. Autonomy can be defined as a battle between two constraints. First, you need to follow a mission, and this mission can be planned or can be defined on the fly by software. And the second constraint is avoiding problems like collision with random objects or behaving in front of unknown things happening during the flight. So uh, the two subsystems have to interact finely uh, for your drone to be autonomous and to be smart. So a low level of autonomy would be following simple instructions like following a GPS path. A higher level of autonomy would be uh, following a GPS path but being able to detect an object and stop to avoid collisions and have a higher even higher level of autonomy would be to follow the GPS path, avoid collisions, and being able to go around the objects uh, to continue your mission. You may also have different requirements regarding autonomy for different phases of your flight. For example, a drone may be autonomous when it's flying at high altitude, high speed, just following a GPS path, sending you information and require a pilot to take off and land. So that would be a very simple autonomous drone. Another type of autonomous drone would be to avoid collision at low speed, close to the ground, uh, but would require supervision when flying at high altitude and high speed. So a fully autonomous drone is defined by different level of autonomies at different phases of the flight, and you, are very, you have to be specific about what you are targeting. It's important to differentiate what is part of the flight stack and what is part of the payload. For example, you need 3D sensing in autonomous drones. Usually you need 3D sensing first to avoid collision when you are flying in real time, so 10 times a second or more, you need to be aware what is in front of the drone to avoid collisions. And part of the payload, sometimes you need to scan the environment in 3D to build a map of what is in front of the drone. Uh, for example, if you are studying or surveying a construction site. So they have different requirements. One needs to be real-time or not very precise. The other one can afford to be offline or needs to be really precise. So you see, differentiating what is part of the flight stack and what is part of the payload is very important. Now let's talk about business. Professional clients may buy one remotely controlled drone to perform some tests, some uh, feasibility studies and for their initial development. But in production, when they will use a large fleet of autonomous drones, they will likely outsource the operation of the fleet to um, a partner. First, because flying is a, is a big um, responsibility from a legal point of view. Also, the maintenance and operation uh, is probably larger when you share a fleet with other clients. And they want to, to focus on their differentiator. For example, uh, perhaps you have a very specific payload, or perhaps you have a data processing algorithm, or a specific piece of software. So it's important to know if you are proposing a technology, drawn as hardware, or a service. To summarize, we saw that each drone solution is highly specialized and dedicated for a specific task. So you have to be clear about your goals and expectations. 
the architecture will be a lot easier to define when you know that, and uh, your drone solution will be easier to position on the market.